At a time when misinformation is rampant, the NewsHour Student Reporting Labs is producing a series of conversations called Moments of Truth that explore why people believe false information and what causes them to change their minds. Tonight, a story about a mother who hesitated to give her child a common childhood vaccine that fights against measles, mumps, and rubella. I'm Mary Krista Smith, and I'm a lifelong Utahn and a mom of two wonderful people, Marley, who's here with me today, and Griffin, Marley's younger brother. I'm 19 years old and currently attending the University of Utah, double majoring in psychology and gender studies. Mom, I know that you read some stuff about vaccines that turned out not to be true, and that led you to like vaccinate me later than was expected. So I'm just wondering like what went into that? I was so excited to be pregnant with you and nervous and wanted to do the right thing. I also was surrounded by other moms who were very convinced that um, vaccines were dangerous. There had been an article that came out in The Lancet. Uh, it was a article by, I think his name is Andrew Wakefield, about the potential that the MMR vaccine could cause autism in babies. So in the 1990s, Andrew Wakefield was a physician um, who enrolled about 12 uh, children into a study where he uh, made a link between the MMR vaccine and childhood autism. Since then, that study has been debunked uh, by numerous uh, sources, and the article itself was retracted, and Wakefield himself has faced censure as a physician, uh, both in the United Kingdom and in the United States. What necessarily helped you like, come to terms with getting me vaccinated? Your grandparents were really concerned about the fact that you weren't vaccinated. They grew up in a time where their friends had polio, and the miraculous you know, polio vaccine really changed everything for my parents' generation. So your grandparents were highly, highly concerned that I was not vaccinating you. What do you think makes people more susceptible to this kind of misinformation? I would say that my desire to want to do the right thing and to be a really good mom to you and to make sure that you were healthy um, certainly was driving a lot of my questioning and concern and a certain amount of cynicism. I think that, you know, there's mistrust that breeds people's susceptibility. The pediatrician brought out a book and showed me photographs of the consequences for babies your age if they got measles or mumps or rubella. And those images, honestly, are still burned in my brain. But I went home and I thought, okay, what are the consequences I can live with? If the worst case scenario happened on either side, which of those scenarios am I willing to live with? And so I opted to have you vaccinated. I mean, if you could go back and like talk to younger you when I was a baby, would you have any specific advice for her or just what would you say? I'm proud of the way I worked through it, honestly. I'm actually really proud of myself and grateful that I listened to my intuition and that I made those decisions based on facts and made those decisions based on science, but also on what I could live with as a mom um, personally. Looking back, I understand that it was probably extremely hard to go against your friends and against like, you know, your other feelings about it. But I just want to say thank you and I'm very happy that you did. Hmm. Thanks for saying that, Mar. I'm yeah. glad you feel that way. I'm yeah. glad you're not like, how dare you vaccinate me? <laughs> Such a wonderful conversation from our student reporting labs. And you can find more Moments of Truth stories on the NewsHour's YouTube channel.